Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a Audi S5. Um, we did a vlog on this S5, I think it's possibly the last one which I uploaded. Um, but yeah, the S5 is back in today. Um, it's having <coughs> it's having H&R lowering springs and spacers which obviously we use for our uh, PE handling package. Um, and it's not one I've done previously so I'll be just as intrigued to see how it looks. Yeah does look spot on but I think I'm more uh, the workshop still a couple of lot of things left to do so we've got to put a sign up by there that size changing there's a sign there the dyno's got to be resprayed and that's the right uh, a sign's got to go by there um, as I listed all there's actually quite a bit of stuff left so I didn't think it was that much but anyway let's crack on with this s5 but I should actually measure it um, to see how different it is in terms of ride height compared to the OEM stance. But yeah, how brilliant is the ramp? Don't need to worry about lowering the car, uh, lowered cars or anything like that because it just sits right on the bottom base. Yeah, really happy. So let's crack on. So I've just finished the one side. It's not a bad install to be honest. It's a lot easier than I initially um, anticipated, but I actually did it slightly different to how most people tend to do these. I just feel how most people tend to do them is just a little bit long-winded and there's a possibility of uh, damaging something. So the way I'm gonna show you is a lot quicker, a lot easier, and you shouldn't damage anything. But let me just show you how people tend to take these off and it's usually with these two so you've got these two um, let's just call suspension link arms or upper arms on this assembly here so people tend to take these out but as you can see they tend to pry in here and there and then just punch them out but quite easy to damage this arm and then snap it completely and you've got to get a whole new arm so I'll show you how I take it off and you don't need to take this off it saves a lot of time as an effort as well but what we've got here bolts uh, not bolts sorry tools required uh, so strut spreader you use your 16 mil socket so 16 mil 18 mil sockets a couple of little 13s got a lot of 10s just the usual stuff really but this is a spring compressor and this is what helps take it out without having to remove those two arms but yeah let's crack on and i'll show you how i take it out forgot i wanted to quickly just show you the ramp how cool does this look it's not actually at full height at the moment so at full height i'm 5'11 and i can stand underneath it without having a crouch or anything but yeah really happy with the ramp cool really easy to use um, got a lot of space on there as well underneath to do obviously the usual stuff only things which you might struggle with is if you do anything which is underneath here which on BMWs you've got the fuel filter but other than that loads of space to do everything you need or everything everything I need I should say so first things first we've got this wiring harness here which is slotted into here so it's literally just a case of just pushing it up a little bit and then it comes out and then this particular car has got a headlight level sensor and you've got a 10 mil bot there so we're going to take those out and then back up here we've got the actual damper so the damper here and then we've got a 16 mil uh, bolt and nut so we're going to take those off and then show you where we are so now we've undone this bolt it's not actually removed because you can see there's fouls on this brake line but it doesn't actually matter um, we removed this and also removed the headlight level sensor little 10 mil there you can actually hold this to stop it from spinning but if it does spin just put a little 10 mil socket uh, spanner on there and then we've got this bolt here 18 mil and 18 mil nut there i've undone it but i haven't actually taken it out just yet and then we've got the bolt for the drop link so we've got 16 mil here and you have to put a 16 mil uh, spanner on that end but You'll notice that the bolt won't come out because of fouls on here. So what you can do is just put, uh, go back up into the cabin, just rotate the wheel, and it should give you enough clearance to take it out. And then we're gonna get some spring compressors on this. 
compress this spring, but we're going to jack up the suspension assembly from here. Um, you can just use a transmission jack, but most people probably won't have one, so just use a normal, tro uh, normal trolley jack. Compress it up and then put a spring compressor on here, but I'll show you how it goes. Next up, how I did this, I lowered the car, did it the way most people would do it with a trolley jack. So lower the car, jack the suspension up, and then compressed the spring assembly and then put the spring compressors on. And you'll see that this is now loose. And it's actually a good idea to do this as well, because obviously when we come to removing the spring and we undo the strut bolt at top, nothing will spring out, because obviously this, uh, this contains all the load. But what you'll do now is you can see the bolt is still actually in here. Can I push it through? Yeah, so bolt is all loose there. So what I'm gonna do now is remove this fully. I took the nut off this end, remove this fully. And then what you'll find is this whole assembly will just drop down a little bit. We'll be able to rotate this and then get this bolt out. You might want to put a load of WD-40 in here for now. Get the strut spreaders in here. Open this up, get some WD-40 in there. And the rest is uh, the rest is quite simple then. Now, what you'll find here with the bolt out, see here the bolt's there, uh, sorry, the bolt's out. That's where it was located there. And then we've got this part out here. The bolt for the drop link is still in there, but it doesn't actually matter for now. Um, and then we've got the strut spreader in here, rotated it, and as you can see, this side a bit easier, as you can see, it's already dropped down a little bit. And this arm is able to move really easily. Rotates on there. But, as you can see, these two arms are still in, but if you just compress, just pull down on your set, it's a bit difficult for one, uh, one person, but as you can see, you can just pull down on this and it moves a considerable amount. So, See there? All you're gonna do is compress it or pull it down. You might have to put a little bit of your body weight on there. Uh, pull it down and then this, this actual damper will come loose or come free from here. And then you just put it to the side and then do undo the top three 13 mil bolts. As you can see now, the damper is free from this assembly, it dampers here was sitting in there and really easy to do all i did was just put a little bit of body weight on here got my hand and uh, around the damper and just pulled it out the way very very simple and it's so much quicker than having to mess around with these because these can take so much time just to get them out so all that's left to do now is where are we we've got three uh 13 mil bolts one there one there a worm back there. This holds the top mount to the uh, damper. And then if we just take this 113, it just makes this one a lot easier. So as soon as you do this, the damper will come out. And what I did, take it out through this side. If it'll go through, it'll go straight through there, in between this brake line and underneath here. So perfect gap for it to fit out of. Just a quick one before I take the damper out. As you can see, it's a little indent right by here and on that side. So make sure you just get the alignment of this back facing towards the engine. And as you can see right by there, it's a lot of locator. So when you put the damper back in, just make sure that that's in that spot. Um, and then it's all aligned with this facing towards the engine. Same as that side as well. So now we've got now we've got the stamper and spring out. It's just a case of undoing this one bolt, which is an 18 mil, and then you've got a six mil in there. So you use the strut socket to undo this. The spring is still compressed with a spring compressor. So once this top mount is off, the spring shouldn't actually fly off. So we'll do it now. Take this off. You see, all job done. So just a case of undoing a spring compressor now, putting the H&R 
one on and then putting it all back in. All right, so as you can see, suspension all back on, everything all tightened up. Yes, job done. A lot easier to do it the way I explained than having to remove these two, which will take you a considerable amount of time. We're all done, so now we will crack on to the rears. So, on to the rear. The rear is pretty simple, pretty similar setup. Um, well, removal to what I do on the BMWs. So, as you can see here, we've got this little bracket here. So, these just pop out. You can literally just get something like this. Um, just prise them away. They come out. And then once that's removed, we're just going to remove this one here. Um, obviously, it adjusts your camber, so you may want to just mark it up to make sure you put it in the same location as where it currently is. Uh, but we're going to remove this one and then remove the damper. And then we'll be able just to pull down on this lower arm, get a spring out. But this one's a 21 and on the other side is an 18. And this is an 18 and an 18 on the other side. And that's all you'll need for the rears. Just wanted to mention something. So when this is sat on the car, it sits on there like that. We take out the little um, little grommets from there and there. Basically, just pull it towards you and then pull it down, and then it should come out. And then the rear is a bit easier than I initially thought. So once this bolt is out, you'll see that this is um, this is to adjust the camber on the rear. This bolt, as you see there, it's a little hole there, and it's a little. I don't know if you're focusing, but there's a little groove there, so just make sure that they are all aligned correctly uh, when you're installing it again. And a little bit easier than I initially thought is you don't actually need to remove this lower damper, just one, just this one part here, and then there's enough for it to drop on down. But obviously, remember to support this because obviously the spring got a lot of load in there. So as soon as you take this out, it'll want to come down. But yeah, just mark it all up or just take a picture of how it was all uh, aligned when you put it back. And then you should be able to get it pretty similar to where it was previously, but make sure you get it all nice and aligned. But yeah, the rears are all done. So there you have it. B9 S5 with RP handling package. H&R springs and spaces all round. Looks the absolute business, this. Look at this. Lovely. I'm still actually uh, so chuffed with the floor as well. <laughs> so it looks brilliant. Like usually I'd obviously do a vlog outside. I just thought, let's just do it inside. Looks absolutely brilliant. Just took another quick test drive as well. Drives as you would expect. Um, not a hard ride at all, nice and compliant as well. Obviously matching the character of an S5. Got that luxury sort of feel to it with obviously the performance on demand. Yeah. Well happy with that. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully this vlog helps um, some potential um, people out who's going to be doing an install on their car or obviously if you're interested in getting it done on your car just get in touch but yeah hope this uh, vlog was of interest to you and you enjoyed watching it and we will see you on the next one <laughs>